We are ready to go. We are recording. Thank you and welcome. For right now, I'm going to mute everybody except for you. Sure thing. And uh, and just as a reminder, um, uh, we are going to go very quickly through a lot of tools today. So um, if you have some questions, uh, try asking them in the moment, or I will, um, I've also set my timer so that I can make sure that I leave time at the end for, for Q&A. So um, either way works for me. I don't mind being interrupted or showing you something in the, in the moment. Um, and today we are going to go through at least 25 tools, apps, and websites for productivity. I actually think we'll get through more than 25. And if we don't, uh, the good news is that um, all of the um, the the tools that I share uh, are, and many, many more are available to you on my latest um, little project. This is my side project. I've been um, extremely um, interested in how do I save how, all of my tools and websites and useful extensions and how do I actually share this? And I've been actually fascinated with this question since uh, really um, the late 90s, uh, you know, um, um, being a sourcer, I started off as a sourcer um, along the way. We didn't have browser extensions back then, but there were certainly plenty of websites that I love to use for sourcing and recruiting. And um, besides my own bookmark bar, there were very few tools that allowed us to actually uh, store those and share them so that it was easy to go back uh, to them, but also uh, share them with others. And um, over the years, I've come up with a few solutions, none of which worked well until finally I decided to build my own website and uh, took a couple of shots at that. And finally, I have, a, I think, a site that I'm pleased with. So the site is called Recruiter Hunt. It's free. It, this is truly a side project. This is what I do in the middle of the night when I can't sleep. I, I find uh, websites for recruiters. Right now, we've got over 500 apps, tools, extensions, uh, and websites um, specifically for recruiters and sourcers. And I'll, I'll take you through a quick tour of um, how it works. But essentially, my goal is to index um, really the most uh, useful tools for recruiters and then create a community around that where there's some discussion. So I'll actually go to the live uh, website right now. And recruiterhunt.com is, uh, is the website. It was named after a similar site called uh, Product Hunt that um, web developers and technical folks use to discover uh, new products. And so I uh, decided to build the, the, build the recruiting version of that. So essentially what you'll see when you hop online is the website. You'll probably be asked to join the, the mailing list. The mailing list is convenient because um, I do send weekly and I put weekly in quotes because sometimes it's bi-weekly, sometimes it's twice weekly, uh, newsletters with new tools. So to stay up to date, um, you can subscribe to the newsletter. And then you'll see here the featured sites. These are sites that have, uh, that, you know, I just want to share and, and shine a light on the latest. These are the most recent sites that have been added and you can scroll through those um, if you want to check out what's new. And then the most popular sites. So where are people clicking on the most? What are they looking at the most? Uh, and eventually we'll get, we'll add some comments so that, uh, and, um, We'll get people upvoting products that they find useful. And uh, as a result, uh, you'll have, uh, I think, a good index of what are some of the latest and most useful tools for recruiters. All of the tools have been organized into collections, and there are over 30 different uh, categories, everything from applicant tracking systems to tools that help you with candidate experience to my own favorite productivity tools to um, over 129 Chrome extensions, uh, to CRMs, to free tools, to uh, you know, tools uh, for tech recruiting. And uh, if you click on those categories, then it expands out uh, into the actual tools under that collection. So tech recruiting tools, I've got tons of tools that are specific to tech recruiters. And to take a look at them, you need only um, check out uh, the square there. So Andela is a new tech recruiting uh, platform and you can check it out. Eventually we'll add some comments right now. They're not there. Um, if you like this tool, if you use this tool, I really do encourage you to, uh, to upvote it. That way you're sharing with your uh, colleagues what's useful for you. 
and you can also visit the website uh, and check out the tool directly. So if I was interested in that tool, uh, I could go to the website and check it out. So that's how the, the site works. I'm going to walk you through today um, quite a few tools that are already indexed on Recruiter Hunt uh, and um, uh, show you how they work for me uh, in terms of recruiting and you can always uh, you'll have the presentation but you can always return to the recruiter hunt site if you're looking for uh, the specific tool I shared or something similar to it for some reason I just let's hope that my um, uh, my connection holds up here and it doesn't move that slow so let's head back to the presentation um, and let's take a look at some new tools. Um, oh, just wanted to mention we've got over 500 tools indexed. I'm trying to add, you know, anywhere from 20 to 50 tools uh, per week. Um, my goal is to get up to about 1,500 tools um, by June or July, so we'll see how that goes. But every day there are new ones, and so it's amazing to me about uh, just the number of tools that are that are out there. You can follow Recruiter Hunt uh, on Twitter. You can like us on Facebook. So if you want to take a moment to do that, we really appreciate that. And of course, you can join the newsletter. Um, so let's start with some of my productivity favorites. Um, I don't do direct recruiting any longer, but I think some of the tools that I use might be helpful for you as a recruiter or sourcer. I'm always looking for ways to save time so um, and just to budget my time. One of the things that I like is just sort of uh, what I call sort of a kitchen timer. It's a um, timer, so it's a website or it's a Chrome extension, um, which means that it's free, uh, that actually just uh, adds a small little timer to my to whatever's happening so if I want to make sure that I get an alarm in 15 minutes if I only want to spend 15 minutes on a bit of um, on, on something I can actually just set up a timer and it'll actually uh, run an alarm for me so I'm gonna pause that but one of the things I actually discovered while I was looking for this tool this morning to find the link I also discovered that in in uh, Chrome you can actually just type in timer and 15 minutes and Google sets up a timer for you. So you can do either or. I like having the extension there just because um, you know I might not want to have an extra uh, tab open, but either way I think works well. I'm just a big fan of doing that. My next tool is called uh, Gorgeous and it's um, my new favorite thing because it helps me in email. I send a lot of the same emails to people um, and again, uh, there's a free Chrome extension. I think there are some additional features that you can pay for, but the free Chrome extension works for me, so I'll, I'll show you how that works. Let's say I've got an open job, uh, a data engineer position, and I want it to see the world's, or I wanted to send the world's worst uh, recruiting email. Um, Gorgeous, once I install the Chrome extension, a little symbol appears in, my, um, in the text box. Uh, in uh, Gmail, and I can put in any of my um, my templates for emails. And so I use this for sales or anything that I do repetitively. But uh, in with this one, what it allows me to do is um, pop in my job description or any text. Um, it supports hyperlinks. It's actually really convenient. So really love using uh, Gorgeous these days. Next tool is called Screeny. And Screeny, um, I am always, for some reason, like this presentation, um, creating screenshots and dropping them into presentations. But anyone who actually uh, does that knows how cumbersome that can be. Um, you'd have to you know, create your screenshot uh, and then go and find it in the file and then uh, upload it. It just takes a little bit of time. Screeny actually eliminates all of this. Screeny's not free. It costs, I think, um, 10 bucks a year, but it's well worth it for me, and I'll show you how it works. So let's say I'm sending this data engineer position, and I wanted to send a, a meme. I just go up to Screeny. I took the screenshot of this meme that I'm gonna include in the world's worst uh, recruiting email. Um, and all I have to do, because Screeny captures my screenshots, is just pull it there. And so, um, let's show you just another, uh, if I want to just take a picture of this screenshot, you know, I do this and uh, and then Screeny uploads this photo here immediately. 
uh, immediately and then I can drag it into my presentation. Let's see if it made it into my, there we go. So there we go, it, my um, photo made it into the world's worst uh, recruiting email um, without me having to go and hunt it down in my files and upload it, et cetera. So that's another one I love to use. And then my next favorite tool, um, this one is not free either, but I think it's well worth it. It's costing me, I think, uh, about 300 bucks a year. That may or may not be incorrect. I keep changing the pricing and I got in on a beta deal. So, um, but for me, I find that it um, saves me a lot of time and a lot of hassle and it eliminates a task that I really despise. And that's going back and forth with people on email. So x.ai is a virtual personal assistant. And in fact, my personal assistant's name is Amy. And so essentially, if I wanted to schedule um, a meeting with this particular candidate, I'd send the email to someone and then I'd CC uh, Amy, uh, Amy Ingram is her name. It's really not a person, it's a bot. And what Amy does is Amy will reach out to uh, the recipient of the email. If I say, Amy, I'd like to schedule the meeting uh, at 9 a.m. on Thursday, uh, Amy takes it from there. She does all of the brokering with the recipient and schedules the meeting and I don't have to deal with the, the recipient of the email. I don't have to figure out if the person can or can't make 9 a.m. Uh, if my calendar's open at 9.30 a.m., Amy will automatically schedule it, send me the meeting invite. Occasionally, she'll have um, a question, such as where is this coffee meeting um, being held? Um, I'll show you just some examples of um, Amy's communication back and forth. Um, so, For example, um, here's my email. I'd like to set up a meeting with Shauna. Um, and then at the end, I say, Amy, please schedule a call with Shauna next Tuesday or Wednesday at her convenience. And Amy will do all of the work for me. For me, it is really a time saver and it's worth uh, the investment there. Most of the time, I am a big fan of free tools, but Amy is dogmatic. She doesn't forget meetings. Um, I always forget meetings. And so um, I really appreciate it. Carmen, so I could not, it, it, sorry, Carmen, I could not, what's see that? That, I could not see that email. I don't know if other people could see it. Oh, you can see my email? No. Were other people able to see that? Let's go back. Let's go back. Whoops. Uh, let's see. Let's go back. I guess nobody could see it, so. No. Well, maybe it blocks emails. Do you think that's possible? Do you think that uh, Zoom is smart enough to, because I'm showing my email now, are you seeing it? Unfortunately, unfortunately not. Okay, well, it's just a typical email and, it, and I, it's literally at the end of my email. In the CC line, I put in Amy's address, which is amy.ai, uh, and um, a, Amy actually uh, just is CC'd on the message. She reads my message. Uh, which in which I ask her to schedule a meeting um, and I give her a couple of I say Tuesday or Wednesday I can be that casual with my language and then she takes it from there. She reads my calendar. She um, Actually will email back and forth with the recipient. Um, she's a bot, um, but she's um, uh, Really amazingly human. So sorry that you can't see my email um, Did you see the email with the data engineer position? I don't believe anybody would see that. We did have a question from Viet Tron, and he's wondering if maybe you're on multiple screens and you just need to switch screens so we can all see it. Could be. I'm not on multiple screens, but I'm going to. Uh, display. Nope, I'm on my, I'm just on my laptop, so. Um, and so I'm not mirroring at all. So uh, I don't know why that is happening. I think it may be Zoom filtering, filtering out email. What I'll do is uh, take a quick screenshot and show you the gorgeous, just in case no one saw that. Let me make this larger so that you can see it.
take a screenshot and just pull it in for you. Uh, and then I'll take a screenshot of the Amy email. All right, okay, so bizarre that it won't show the email, but that's okay. Unfortunately, not seeing the screenshots either. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, okay, I'm gonna pull the screenshots in for you. So the first screenshot that I show you is actually um, just the example of Gorgias. So what Gorgias does in my, um, in my email, this little G icon appears, and if I want to insert the text for the data engineer, I simply click on the G, the data engineer job description, or here's my sales uh, email, more about recruiting toolbox services, and that um, all that text appears right there um, in the actual email. I don't have to go search for it. I don't have to go and cut and paste. It's actually right there for me, so really convenient. And then, so that's one. Um, and now Screeny actually looks like this. It's a Chrome extension that you, it's, it's actually a set of, it's an app that you must install. It's uh, $10 uh, per year or $10 forever, I think, to install it. So pretty inexpensive. Um, and what it does is captures all my screenshots here. So if I want to put the screenshot into my presentation, um, after I take the screenshot, I just go up to Screeny and put it in. Um, and this screenshot actually shows you the email in which I just cc'd Amy uh, dot X, uh, AI, and then at the end of my email, I give her a few instructions, and then Amy goes and schedules the meeting for me. So that's how that one works. So sorry you guys couldn't see that, just bizarre that you couldn't, um, but got some more, um, Let's view slideshow. That's a more Working now, Carmen. When you pull in your stuff now, we were able to see. Got it. Okay, cool. Can always do something quick and in the moment if you're resourceful. All right. Oh, here's another one. Um, sorted. I'll actually just show you that um, on the sorry, website. Itself. Sorry, Carmen. You wanted to be interrupted. We have a question from Madhu. Wanted to know, uh, Madhu, how about I unmute you and you can ask your question directly. Sure. You are unmuted. Welcome, Madhu. Hi, Dan. Hi, Carmen. Hi. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, I joined a little late, so I'm not sure whether I feel like, you know, maybe I missed something. So my question is, um, the tool sending out emails from Outlook, is it, is it uh, some kind of integration with Outlook or, or from where this tool will be sending the email? So it will be, so these, the, which one, which tool are you referring to? Let's go back. And... Uh, X dot AI, um, Amy. It, it will be sending the tool from your inbox. Okay. So the and... inbox is referring to the Outlook inbox? Yes. Okay. Okay. Got you. So it yeah. doesn't matter what email platform you're on. All you don't, there's no software to download. You, all you have to do is just CC in your CC line. Uh, your personal or virtual assistant, you get a choice of Amy or Andrew. Uh, I chose Amy and Amy uh, does all the work from there. Okay, got you, yeah, got you. It's a great question. Some of these, and um, I'll try to be careful and remember to, um, to point it out when it requires that you use Google Chrome um, or if it's uh, able to be used across platforms. So let's take a look at a few more um, productivity tools for me. Sorted is one of them. What I want to do, I am going to, ah, uh, here's why, I think. All right, share screen. I think Zoom is interesting. It's not sharing my, it won't share all screens. Now, can you see my email now? Yes, we can. All right, I, I figured it out. It's the Zoom thing. Cool. All right, so let me show you Sorted. Uh, Sorted is a tool that, uh, again, it's, a, it's a, a Chrome extension, so easily installed uh, and for use it with Gmail. Um, but it takes your inbox 
and it turns it into, which you can see is always overflowing, it turns your inbox into a to-do list. So um, I tried this tool once before and I didn't like it because it was cumbersome, but now I really love it. So I can remember things to do. So if I wanted to, I saw this and I wanted to do surveys and I know that this is something that I need to follow up on, I can take that email and place it right into my follow-up uh, to-do list or list category. Uh, I have to do follow-up calls, coffee, you can add additional um, additional categories. Uh, and then this allows me to go through and as I've done it, I can check it off or I can delete the email. I can also write from this inbox actually um, respond to or um, uh, read the email. So if I just kind of click on the email itself, it opens there. If I want to uh, reply, I can do the same thing. Now, sometimes I don't like this format, I don't want this format, and this tool allows me to very easily uh, switch back over to regular Gmail. And that, this is what I love about it, because it becomes very useful, because I don't have to um, use uh, that, that um, uh, uh, visualization if I don't wanna do that. So that's a great one, great one for me. Um, the next one, the next tool that I wanna show you is Extensity. And um, if you are a Google Chrome user and you are um, uh, always installing different uh, Chrome extensions, then you probably know that sometimes they don't work well with each other um, and or you don't always want all of the extensions running in the background and usurping all of your energy. And so extension, Extensity captures every single extension that you upload and it allows you to turn them on or turn them off um, whenever you need them. So if I decided I don't need the honey, I just click on it and now it's disabled that um, extension and anytime that I wanna turn it back on, I just click it, click it on again. So um, I, again, this is just um, an, an easy way to make sure that you're managing your Chrome extensions and you can always check to see, have I already uploaded that? Is that something um, that, I, that I need to do? That's the next one. Um, the next um, productivity favorite, is, I go um, off and on about, about this one. It's, oh, that's my timer. I should probably stop it, right? Okay, it's not gonna stop for me because I'm in the middle of this and I can't remember which. Oh, sorry about that, folks. Where is it? Really? Ah, timer, where are you? Nope, I set that Google timer and I didn't know, I don't know how to turn this off. If anyone knows how to turn it off, please let me know. Here we go. Sorry about that. Ah. Uh -huh. Ah, sorry about that. Oh, the beauties of live webinars. All right, so our next, our next, um, let's see, share screen. Our next one is, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Oh, our next uh, tool is the search date changer. And can you see the Chrome extension on the screen? It should say search date changer. Dan, can you see the, the search date changer? I can see it. Okay, great. Alrighty, so it's a Chrome extension. So again, it's free. Um, and um, the way this works is that, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you conduct a search in Google, in, uh, Google um, there are some cool search tools that allow you to limit your search results. And so right now I set um, a search uh, and it's showing all results for all time. I just um, typed in the name of my colleague. I can limit my search and this is particularly useful when you're searching for resumes. Sometimes you just want the fresh ones. So you can say, I only want search results from the past month or the past year or the past week or whatever your, your date range might be. And the um, Chrome extension that I just showed you actually um, does that for you permanently if you want to do that. 
Uh, and sometimes I do. Sometimes I just want to make sure that I'm, if I'm searching for something quickly, I only want to get results within the last month. I don't want all the old results. And this Chrome extension will filter out all of the old results. So, Carmen, can you um, maximize that? You had your list on the left that you were pulling from so we can see it. We're back on the productivity favorites, the small icons. Oh, you are. Okay, so let me just go back to sharing Google Chrome. Okay, here we go. Share screen. I'll share that example with you once more. There we go. All right, can you see it now? All right, so my search for John Blastalika. Um, and so essentially, um, what that Chrome extension does, and so if you check here in your, in your tools with your Google search, you can actually limit your searches to a, a date range. And what that Chrome extension does is permanently set your range. And so sometimes I uh, permanently set my date range for one year so that I only get search results for one year back. That way I don't get all of the fluff or I, I only get the freshest information. And you can do it for one week or one month. It's really helpful, I think, um, when you're searching um, for resumes and um, that piece of it. And um, while I'm here, I'll show you my other productivity um, essential. It's called Uber Conference. Um, it doesn't work well for things like this where you have a lot of people. Um, but uh, Uber Conference works really well when uh, you have um, two or three people that you'd like to include either on a phone chat or a video chat and it's free and um, it is something that I live by. I actually use um, a site like this to actually um, uh, schedule all of my phone meetings so that I always know the number, the phone number for everyone that I'm calling. Um, it's almost always going to be this Uber conference number. So that way I don't have to remember it or fumble around for it when I'm looking for it. So those are my productivity essentials. Let's go back to, I have to switch over the sharing. Let me share, Let's go to PowerPoint, share screen. And let's take a look at um, a couple of sites for um, automating scheduling. In the interest of time, I won't go through all of them, but um, I will share um, a couple of them. Assistant.to uh, and Calendly are, are quite popular. So let's just go um, check them out online, Google Chrome. You'll have to go back to how you're doing it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. Zoom makes you go back and forth between the presentation and your and the website. So assistant.to, this is one that I've used in the past and I highly recommend it. Works very, very well. Um, so it looks like this. Um, if you send an email and you put the assistant.to look um, in your email, uh, essentially, you, you, as the sender, can go in and uh, actually create a list of times um, that um, are open for you. So if on Monday I wanted, I wanted to say I'm open at 10 or 11, and on Tuesday I'm open at 11 and 12, um, the email right there would have the embedded message that says, Carmen's available at 10 or 11 on Monday, or 11 or 12 on Tuesday, and the um, recipient gets to select that time, and then it's automatically scheduled on your calendar. Um, so saves quite a bit of time, saves quite a bit of the um, back and forth. And another tool that a lot of folks are excited about is Calendly. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, here we go. And again, uh, it's embedded in your email and you get to set up your calendar on the back end and um, no, no, this is the wrong one. This is not, we do not want to use Calen, I think it's dot .dy, I think that's the one I'm looking for. Uh, wrong one. In any case, we can go to the Recruiter Hunt site uh, and you can search for it. So, Let's just search for the right one. Let's see, 
at the end of the DUI. Why oh, isn't showing up? It's not showing up for me today. Uh, let's see. Let's go to collections. Let's go to calendars and scheduling. We've got 19 different tools. And Calendly, D-L-L-Y, that's what I was missing. Uh, and um, again, this one, it comes highly recommended from quite a few recruiters. Uh, essentially, you can set up rules-based uh, calendar scheduling. And sometimes that's even more helpful if you are um, working with multiple hiring groups um, and you can um, decide to um, schedule uh, calendar meetings for specific groups uh, and uh, again it's uh, embedded in your email and then the recipient gets to select the time that works um, works best for them a lot of people love it because it's sensitive to time zones um, and it's very mobile friendly so my suggestion on these um, is to Try them out. Almost all of them offer free trials. The assistant.to is completely free, so um, I highly recommend that. But if you're going to use one of these, spend a week or so really putting it through its paces and then decide whether or not it's the right tool for you. Let's move to, I'm going to show some of the other cool things. Um, let's move to um, the idea of let's share my PowerPoint now um, better job descriptions so all of us have to write uh, job descriptions or improve them uh, and there are a couple of tools out there that are fun if you haven't used Textio um, it's really uh, a great tool to use there's a new one that I wanted to show you they're working on it um, and I just think that it's fairly neat it's called good one um, because it provides a little bit of um, research for you around job descriptions. Let me share my Google Chrome. So good one by uh, Relink actually will take your job title and share some insights about the job title that you're um, that you're working on. And it's being slow this morning. Um, but essentially, it uh, shares with you most important skills. Um, it will share um, a little bit about uh, what kinds of jobs people have done in the past. It talks a little bit about uh, the formal education um, and where people move to once they uh, leave the position. Right now, it's free, so my um, advice is to go in and play with it uh, and enjoy it um, while you can. Okay. Textio is another one. If you're writing job descriptions, it's really helpful in terms of um, uh, just checking your grammar and making sure that the information that you're sharing is um, positive and inspirational and bias-free. So um, what, it, what it will do, I'll actually just go in and pull in this data engineer position, see if we can get one done fairly quickly. Let's see. Uh, go let's go back to Textio and Textio does offer a free trial uh, and I think there may even be a free version so let's say data engineer definitely worthwhile if you're improving your job descriptions go in and paste uh, post that one in and it gives me a score of how great my job description is so um, if someone out there is working for Amazon, you guys are getting an eight. So that's kind of really bad. It uses corporate cliches. Um, it's missing the equal opportunity statement, which that's my fault. I probably cut that out. It's repetitive, um, not enough verbs, not enough bullet content, content um, needs more you statements. So it will actually help you with writing much more effective job descriptions. And I love the fact that it gives me uh, recommendations about how to improve it. And you can actually work on your job description right in this platform and you can watch um, as, your, um, as your score goes up. So um, you don't want to have an eight, which is really bad. And I think it got, the score is from zero to 100. So this one's exceptionally bad. 
Uh, and one more, there's Text Diver, which does a little bit uh, something similar and analyzes your, your text. And then the other, um, the other tool that I wanted to so show you is Grammarly. Uh, and Grammarly is a free Chrome extension, and it just helps you write better. I can't tell you the number of emails that I get with typos and poor grammar. Um, and if you add this Chrome extension, uh, it will actually um, eliminate those area, errors or at least point them out for you um, and help you write better, um, more concise. Um, I have a degree in journalism, and so words are my thing, and it pisses me off when people don't take the time to write really um, well-written emails. So it will work on any um, bit of text, your emails or job descriptions or anything that you highlight. Let's move to the um, Boolean part of the presentation. I know many of you are out there sourcing and, um, and uh, trying to um, create Boolean search, search strings. Um, and there are tools out there that will help you do this a little bit better. There are quite a few um, Boolean search generators. And in fact, um, I will share with you um, on uh, Recruiter Hunt. So let's go back here that we've got, I'll point out a few for you. Share screen. All right, let's go to Recruiter Hunt and Collections. And there is a collection here um, for um, search and Boolean. There are 38 different tools that you can use that will help you search better. Um, some of the tools that um, are great, someone started a Boolean string bank. Um, they just started it and people are adding Boolean strings there. So um, great for you. There's another one that, that is a spreadsheet that's out there that supposedly helps you build search strings automatically. Um, but I'm uh, really fond of tools like Boolean string generator, which will generate the string for you or even a tool like Recruitem that, again, it will um, generate the string for you. And then there's another one that's a little less known called Bool, and it is a Boolean search generator as well. Um, and it's a Chrome extension. All of the tools that I just mentioned under Boolean are all free, so uh, that's helpful. Uh, and again, what you want to do is um, uh, um, download the, the extension input your search terms and it will actually generate the search uh, 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 search for you. You can actually um, conduct the search right there online um, and or save the search string. So that's what's so cool about it. Uh, and just to show you another one of those, let's take a look at the um, Recruit M tool as well. I'm a big, big fan of um, these tools, they've gotten a lot better. So if I wanted to put my data engineer in there and I could add location and I want to add Seattle um, and it finds it for me on LinkedIn, but also um, on other, uh, other um, platforms. And I can either copy this, um, the URL, I can save the search itself, I want to recreate that, or I can actually open the search results right there in Google and it's actually finding the profiles for me. So again, free tool makes it a lot easier. I'm, I also believe that you should learn Boolean because you do need to know the basics, but sometimes you just need a tool to help you quickly get to what you need. Um, another tool that uh, I would share with you uh, to help you as you're uh, conducting searches is Simply Seek. Uh, it is a Chrome extension. Uh, and um, again, plug in your uh, search terms uh, and uh, location and keywords, and it will create uh, create the search for you. Uh, and it shows up just as a, an item on your menu bar. So easy to pull that. You don't have to go to a website. And then the last thing that I'll show you for the Boolean search piece is um, uh, the personal block list. So sometimes if you're searching and you're getting resumes from uh, indeed for example and let's say you don't want those results you can create a personal block list and manage this block list you can do it from within Google but it's very cumbersome um, this Chrome extension allows you to block all results from indeed.com or in this example all results from matcuts.com uh, that way you won't have to see that content in your search results um, and so you can see how combining this tool 
with the search date timing tool. So let's say I don't want Indeed results and I only want results from within the last year. Really makes your searching a lot more um, precise. And I'm all about that. So let's go back to our Prezo and let's get some examples for tech recruiters because I know that some of you are out there fighting the good fight and um, trying to find folks in technical fields. So there are quite a few um, resources on Recruiter Hunt for tech recruiters. These are just a few of them. So let's go back to the Google Chrome and let's look at um, Amazing Hiring is um, a really great new tool. There's a paid version, but there's also a Chrome extension. And the Chrome extension will actually help you find um, profiles on GitHub and Stack Overflow and similar sites. It will also help you cross index, um, cross index uh, the profiles uh, across other, uh, all the platforms. So if you find someone on LinkedIn uh, and maybe you wanna also see if they have a Facebook page or a page on Stack Overflow, or maybe you're looking for um, a work email versus a personal email, you can use a tool like this to, to get to folks. And it is all focused on, on the tech piece. The, another, the next resource is uh, crowded.com. And crowded does the search for you. Uh, and um, uh, essentially, you can um, search for um, profiles for free. Right now, it's a completely open and free platform. Um, I think uh, you might want to give it a shot. I think this works best when you're looking for more entry-level candidates. I actually think they are pulling a lot of their candidates from some of the coding schools and coding academies. Um, but play around with it. I tried it out um, probably more than a year ago, so it may have um, vastly improved. But I love um, the fact that it's free. The next tool is... Um, something I found the other day when I was looking for information on cybersecurity professionals, there is uh, a website called CyberSeek, so very helpful if you're looking for cybersecurity folks. And what I loved here was taking a look at um, the data that they're sharing. So if you need to go back to your hiring managers and say, hey, it's, it's fairly impossible um, in Washington State to find a cybersecurity person because... Um, there are um, 6,000, over 6,000 um, uh, job openings, and it also will give you, um, uh, the, if you click on the state, it will give you the ratio of open positions to available talent, um, and um, it will tell you a little bit more about, uh, about the area and the challenges that you're facing. Often, um, you're looking for this kind of data uh, and research to help you understand uh, or either make the case that perhaps you need to look at um, relocation or remote working, a site like this will, um, will actually help you make that case. So that one's pretty cool. And then the other um, resource that I found recently, someone um, shared actually on Recruiter Hunt is called Glossary Tech. And so essentially um, it uh, provides definitions um, so programming paradigms, I don't know what that means. Uh, it actually will um, share a definition of this tech term um, and uh, tries to do so uh, in a way that um, recruiters can easily understand uh, and um, it's categorizing information uh, and, uh, and also um, provides related information like the scripting languages that are uh, associated with this, um, et cetera. So I found that site to be um, fairly useful if you are learning tech or just need to quickly look something up. I'm also a big fan of using Wikipedia for that. So um, let's see, we have 10 minutes left and that's probably just enough to get into some serious stalking. And so we're gonna go through uh, GiveHub, which is for tech, uh, Email Qualifier, Nymeria, and Workable. So uh, let's start with GiveHub. So um, essentially, for those of you who are doing tech recruiting, um, if you have a username, um, you need only plug to plug in uh, a username, a, give, a GitHub username, um, and it will find the um, find the email address for you. I don't have a 
uh, a GitHub, GitHub account. Um, but if I did, it would find that uh, um, email for you. It works. Um, I gave it a whirl a couple of weeks ago. It worked about 60% of the time for me. So if you're sourcing off GitHub, it's definitely worth, um, worth a whirl. And again, it's a free website that anyone can use. Time myself so I can make sure that I use leave time for questions. Next site is uh, email qualifier, uh, and what that does is it allows you to um, plug in an email address, uh, and it will find um, all of the related uh, social profiles that are available for the person. Uh, and again, this is not limited to tech; it's for anyone, and it's a Chrome extension, so um, free to use. What it also does, which is really cool, is it will actually extract the emails that you find and throw them into a CSV file. So if you're doing some serious sourcing, um, that is really helpful. Um, Nymeria is um, another site that will find email addresses. So um, it is um, uh, free to use. And essentially, if you conduct a search, Nymeria will actually extract the email addresses from your search. Um, and or if you are looking at a LinkedIn profile, uh, it will um, even if it's a third level or second level connection, it will do the work of um, finding uh, the email address for you if it can. Um, just pointing out on Recruiter Hunt, there are Let's see, I think I was up to 60 different tools for, uh, for contact info. Yeah, we've got 60 different tools for contact info. So if you are looking to find contact info uh, for someone and they're on the web, um, very likely the solution can be found in the contact info collection. Um, Nymeria is a new one that's been getting great reviews. I'm gonna close out some of my tabs here or I'm gonna explode my computer. It's just gonna explode. All right. So Nymeria, any mail finder is getting uh, great reviews. Uh, Clearbit Connect, which actually appears in um, my in email here. So it's a, uh, again, it's a Chrome extent, it's a Chrome app that you can, or a Gmail app that you can install. Uh, and I hit my Clearbit Connect. And let's say I want to find all of the people who have the recruiting toolbox domain name. And sure enough, it gives me um, all the people um, that um, either have worked in the past or currently work at Recruiting Toolbox. And I click on the profile there, and there is Ben's email. And it will do that for, um, let's see, Nordstrom.com. Let's see if I can get any people from that. It's probably going through a long search. But here we go. So if you're doing some sourcing and you have a specific company that you want to search out of, I think that Clearbit is a cool tool to use. Um, on top of that, um, the, other re um, the other reason I love um, let's do this. The other reason I love John. I love um, Clearbit is that it provides in the same way that Reportive provides, but it provides um, a little bit of background on uh, the person, uh, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn profiles, but it also provides information on the on the company as well. So if we were a public company, we would actually share uh, the size of the company, the number of employees, the revenue, and that kind of thing can sometimes be important if you're having a conversation with someone. Let's see, what was my other one? Oh, and my last, um, contact stalking info uh, is uh, uh, workable. So workable, uh, which is a paid tool, has a free Chrome extension. And the Chrome extension allows you to um, highlight any name that you find uh, on the web and uh, it will search for an accurate email address or even a phone number or even a resume if it exists out there. So plenty of tools to help you find contact info. Um, I'm a, a big fan of that. A lot of, I um, oh, want well, my new favorite one. I just have to show you this. I'll give you one more tool. Let's see. You can always search um, Recruiter Hunt. And I've got some tools for um, searching Facebook. Quite a few tools out there these days to search Facebook. Um, 
could save your Facebook content, which I think might be useful, especially if you participate in some of the recruiting groups. Um, there's a search tool for Facebook. There's Q search that will search uh, Facebook timelines. Uh, if you want to get deeper and search for uh, user, if you know someone's user ID, you can actually scrape the user ID and then go and actually um, cross-reference those user IDs with email addresses. Um, but this is my new favorite. It's called Stockface, um, which is kind of a scary name. But essentially, um, if you plug in someone's um, Facebook, uh, Facebook uh, URL, let's try it again. I'll do it with John. We're just and you can stalk that person. John actually has some privacy settings in there, but many people don't. Um, and you can get everything from the groups they belong to, to the pages that they've liked, to the stories that they've liked, what they've commented on, uh, the photos that they've liked. John has his photos locked down, so I can't see his photos. Um, but if I'm interested in maybe professional groups that people belong to, um, there I can actually go in um, and, uh, figure out all the things that John uh, is involved in and um, from there maybe um, get additional information. So tons of tools out there. We're about three minutes um, before we're supposed to end. I have a little time so I can hang out. Um, would love to know if there are any questions. Folks, so you can unmute yourself or type a question and Carmen is going to remain with us to answer all those questions. I'm sure there's some. And or and or if there's a tool that you've been looking for, um, maybe I can find out if there's such a tool. Well, if not, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a chance. Um, in the meantime, I'll show you another tool that I love for my productivity. This screen that you're seeing here is actually my new tab. So every time I create a new tab, um, I get a beautiful photo. Um, and uh, I get my to-do list. Uh, and this tool is called um, Momentum. Uh, let's see, Momentum. It's a Chrome app, and again. Um, hey, hey, Carmen, uh, I have a question hey. when, when you're done with this. Sure. Yeah, so momentum, yeah. So essentially you can get, uh, you can make turn your extra tab into to-do list. And I really like that because it just keeps me focused on what I need to accomplish for the day. Go ahead, TJ. Uh, yeah, quick question on, on um, uh, scheduling tools. Um, and mm -hmm. you know, maybe you might've covered this, but do you know what a good scheduling tool is for Outlook? Um, you know, one of the challenges I have is like, I want to just send somebody a scheduling tool and avoid the back and forth. What's, what's something good for Outlook, if there is one? There are a couple of them. Um, and there's a new one that I need to add that's called TimeTap. I think it's time, timetap.com. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, TimeTap, and there's got to be another one. I think there's another one. I thought there was an, at least one more that would uh, um, sort of eliminate that one. There's time tap and I'll have to do a little bit of research and I can, I can send that to, uh, to Dan because I'm pretty sure there um, is another one that works well with, at least one more that works well with Outlook. Now I'll do the research and add it to the site. Uh, then second question, um, have you ever used the tool Tax Expander where you can just, you know, put like a little snippet and it expands? It is. Um, I, I have used that one. I have that one indexed as well. I just, um, Borgias does the same thing. So you can actually, um, in Borgias, so if I'm composing a new email and I go here, I get my Gorgeous. I find Gorgeous just a little bit easier to use, but if I add a new template, I can throw my text in there and then I can do a text shortcut. But okay. text and, and so is, works similarly. And then is there, a, is there something like that for, for Outlook? Like I've, in the past, I've, you know, here I've been using Outlook, but like in the past I've used 
text expander and, and you can book me, but I, I don't know if there is stuff for, for Microsoft products. So I was just wondering if you have anything like that. Yeah, and um, I think Gorgeous actually does work um, on Outlook as well. Um, uh, it's just, you know, because Microsoft has that closed system, so many tools, uh, you know, so many more tools are built on the open Google platform. That's the disadvantage of Outlook. I think Outlook is a much more stable email platform. It just isn't open. So that, you know, it's the trade-off. And, you know, many organizations opt for the Outlook piece of it. Um, I actually will add that to my list of to-dos to find some more apps and tools that work with Outlook. Cool, thank you. I'll, I'll put that in an upcoming newsletter or blog. Any other questions? Was this helpful? Was to me. <laughs> cool. It was great, thank you very much. Awesome. Well, definitely take advantage of the site, sign up for the newsletter, let me know if you like it, tweet me. Um, it's, you know, it's a side project, so I don't get to work on it every day, but I try to get a little bit done every day. Well, being an auctioneer, I guess it's my time to say, are going once, going twice. Do we have any more questions, folks? As Carmen said, you are invited to share tools with her to add to her list in Recruit Hunt. You can actually submit tools, right on the Well, Carmen, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Um, going once, going twice. Folks, speak up. Now's your last chance. Well, anyway, thank you all for spending an hour of your busy work schedule with us. Carmen, thank you so much for agreeing to present to Search Wizards consultants and internal staff. And I guess if there's no further questions, everybody can uh, get back to their busy days. But thanks again, Carmen. Really appreciate it. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks, Carmen. I love, I love the Search Wizards team, so. <laughs> Thank you, Carmen. Cool. Have a great day. Thanks. <laughs>